Today's topic is about in a divorce, dividing assets, and we're starting right now. In a divorce, owning a home, owning a house, owning properties, owning assets. So let's dive in a little bit about how would we divide these assets. So what is going to happen is evaluations, right? So how do we evaluate those assets? Many times, or many times not, owners of assets specifically outside of real property don't have any appraisals for these assets. The only time that you will have an appraisal probably is if you have them insured individually, not in an insurance policy that kind of gives you a, maybe $5,000 or $1,000 to cover those things. But each piece would be evaluated, appraised, and insured with an insurance company. Now, if you don't have that, and most people do not, then we are going to have to hire an appraiser and it's going to be a professional appraiser per category. So a jewelry would be one appraiser, art would be another appraiser and so on. And so is how do assets being divided? The courts, as you've seen in the other video segments that I've done with a real estate and family law attorney, that the courts want you to split everything 50-50 unless you guys make agreements among yourself and you present those agreements and then there's no question about it. But each attorney who represents that party will advise that party that maybe they are taking a loss. So just because you made an agreement about something doesn't mean that somebody else is not gonna butt in and try to intervene. And it's perfectly fine because this is why we hire the attorney so they can protect our best interests. So moving on to the next piece is your home. So again, there's a lot of things that are going on with the house and that's we spoke about that in another video you can watch that video a little bit later but anyway so now let's talk about businesses right so let's say a couple owns a business together now there's a dilemma what are we going to do are we going to sell the business so we can split the money most of the times if the business is successful it's probably not the best case scenario many times Couples will decide that we hate each other, we don't want to live together, but we're great business partners, so why not just keep the business going and operate the business together? The other thing is, what if one spouse owns the business and the other one really is not involved in the business? Now, but that still becomes a marital type of asset. So there's going now to be a business appraiser, so a business professional, who can evaluate the business will have to be hired to do that as well. So that's it's a repetition, but now let's get into real property, right? This is rental property specifically. Airbnbs is very popular right now. A lot of people are doing that. The confusion that I see with clients is that they think that because it's a house or a property or real property, real estate, then it will be evaluated as whatever the market value to sell that property is, but no, that's not the case. So we are going to be evaluating this property as business as well. So we want to see what kind of business income it generates, what's the potential and what's the value of that property. So be mindful when you are negotiating those kind of things very often, each party has different needs and different wants and I may not be interested in running an Airbnb but yet maybe there's a rental property that's just tenant occupied and the two I will negotiate and say okay well, you keep the Airbnb and out the rental property that's just an annual rent and so on and so forth so the point is that my goal is to just give you some general information a disclaimer i'm not an attorney i'm not giving you legal advice i'm just giving you some basic knowledge so that you have an understanding in relation to real estate and in a divorce what happens because 
with this general information, you have a better option and leverage so that when you are speaking with an attorney or interviewing or consulting with an attorney before actually hiring an attorney, that you at least have an idea of how things work and it will help you choose the right attorney to represent you in your best interest, as well as if there's a home to sell and other properties to sell, if that's the agreement, having a realtor like myself on your team would be beneficial to guide you along the way. We are willing to answer your questions. If you want to ask them publicly, please ask them in the comments. Myself and David Traster would love to answer your questions there. If you do that in the comments, then obviously more people are able to benefit from your questions and the answers. But if you want to ask a private or personal question, you can email us at keeping it real with a sphere. It's right there for you on the screen. And I will also type it in the description for you for easy access. Don't be shy, ask away. That's what we're here for. We want to help. Hope this video was helpful to you and please subscribe, share, and we will see you on the next video.